Hey viewers, welcome to another game discussion with ProGamer. Today we are doing a game between Bowman SX in the bottom right corner as our first Protoss player and our second Protoss player is going to be Hitman who is in the bottom left corner. So four player map, this is a pretty big map. Um, I'm assuming there's going to be lots of standard play for the early game at least. Um, yeah, so I'm going to put this at um, faster times four. So we're going to just uh, go through the early game pretty rapidly. Gateway coming up over here. Uh, on the other side we will see a fast expand. And for the rest, yeah, that shouldn't be... What? He built his nexus in the base. Seriously, right next to his other nexus. Okay, uh, assuming this is not a bug. Uh, the only reason I can think of that you want to do this is to get out probes quicker, but he already has his probes that he needs here. I'm not actually sure what the reasoning behind this is, but he probably has his reasons and I'm not going to doubt any of the pro players for now. Um, I, I really have no clue why he would do that. Nexus in your base. I, I don't even know. Anyhow, we see um, Twilight Council and now Dark Shrine coming up, so Dark Templar are going to be warped in. Um, I don't know if he has a pylon somewhere already. He might actually be building that here. But yeah, he needs somewhere to warp in. Uh, there comes the pylon, yep. And we're going to see some Dark Templars warp in. The scout didn't actually make it far enough in to actually scout this. So that is awesome because, uh, well, hidden tech is always good, right? It's, uh, it's the best tech you can get. Yeah, it's um, If your strategy normally revolves around having hidden tech, it's probably bad. But in this case, it might actually work out because, well, Dark Templar can do a lot of damage if it doesn't get scouted. And especially, oh, there is a robotics facility underway. But especially if there's no robotics facility being built, then it's going to be super hard to defend against this. I guess you can do with like a forge and cannons. You can technically defend, although it would be, yeah, kind of tedious. But yeah, he does have a robotic facility up. I'm assuming that he will be able to do this. There's the Dark Templar coming in and we will have to see how effective this is. I am going to assume he gets at least five probe kills before something comes out, maybe even more, and yeah, depending on what he wants to do with this, uh, because there needs to be an observer out, and the observer takes quite a while to build, um, yeah, just going around killing people, five kills already, six, yes, more, no, he's going to run away, and yeah, he did scout the double nexus as well. But yeah, he can now resupply his, um, his his army or his, well, probe count twice as quickly. So yeah, that's why you do that, right? So the uh, observer is out now. I don't know if he's building any more. I don't know if he has multiples. I'm assuming he does because he now... No, he only has one. Uh, I kind of assumed because he knows that there's a Dark Templar on the loose. Dark Templar gets out without losing more than the shields. Um, yeah, with Dark Templar already out, he needs to defend both his army and his base. So he needs two observers, and I guess he will build one as soon as he moves out. Of course, you can uh, defend your base pretty much with an observer, and the fact that you can warp in, you have a mothership core, you have a nexus cannon ready to go, and no, not going to snipe the warp prism anytime soon. Uh, yeah, I'm assuming an, another observer coming out here. Oh, he's not building anything. He uh, wasted some of the chrono boost there. But yeah, observer finally coming out and he's going to move out with his army. The observer is with it. Yeah, it's just lagging a little bit behind. Um, the stalker going to scout the front end. And this is going to be, um, well... Uh, an economy player versus, I guess, a rush player? I'm not sure what to call this. I've never actually seen this. Uh, Nexus in your base, right next to your other Nexus. I, I just don't know. I, I don't understand. But, hey, it's not the first time I get surprised by a strategy, so uh, there's that. 
so we have two immortals versus the one immortal, but um, yeah, it all, it's it's all going to come down to the zealots and the stalkers. The the immortals, I'm assuming, are going to be the focus fire down as soon as possible, and normally that just well leaves a little more damage on well oh three immortals now. Which means he has very little rest army, it is just immortals, and immortals are terrible against zealots. Yeah, what are you going to do against that? I mean, there's really nothing you can do against the against the, the zealots with the immortals. So yeah, he has a huge army still remaining, whereas the three immortals died, the entire army died, but not pressuring further in. Another immortal coming up, but without any backup army, this immortal can't really do a whole lot. So we'll just have to see how that works out. Okay, two zealots now. But two well, why only two? He only has two gateways. Or warp gates in this case. Why would you only have two warp gates when you're on T bases? That's that makes no sense at all. I guess he overcommitted a little bit on the Dark Templar rush, although it did pay off, I guess. Somewhat. Uh, Archon com coming in now. But yeah, really not building any army, and that is going to cost him dearly. Another immortal is going to go down. Great force field on the ramp here. Uh, it's going to uh, block this, uh, well, backup army, let's call it, of probes completely out of the fight. And yeah, there's no, well, more army coming in. There's, there's no reinforcements from the top, from the high ground. And all of these probes are going to go down. Oh my god. How how do you lose to this? He's at like half the economy, plus he lost 400 minerals. He still hasn't expanded. But yeah, he is on three gateways, so he can warp in more than this guy on uh, two. Well, now four. Has he had five? Yeah. So he now has five warp gates, which should be better. But he has no money. He has no resources to actually warp in stuff. And yeah, I guess this is just GG. He, he just lost to a Nexus in the base. The uh, Archon might actually be able to do something here. But, oh, this is such an uphill battle at this point. Although he does have the economy advantage and that is quite big actually. Economy in this kind of a matchup means that you can build more units, and yes, he's behind on units at the moment, but he can warp in five units, where his opponent can only warp in three. So, yeah, I have to still say that he has an opportunity to win this, but yeah, more drops coming in. There was a drop earlier, it was just a bunch of zealots. But uh, yeah, no probes mining in the main base, which means that he's no longer ahead in the economy even. Well, kind of obvious, I guess. Um, yeah, the the wall, uh, the wall off of the ramp, and the Archon might actually go down here. Archon, come on! Nope, no, no, not folks firing the Archon at all. Now he is, and um, yeah, well, it instantly goes down. Yeah, more damage done to this army. Just this, this is just it's the weirdest game ever. How does this work? How does this? result in a victory. He didn't even use the Chrono Boost in the end. He has uh, two next eye pretty much full and um, well I guess he just had the better economy even though he didn't expand at all. So he spent 400 of his early game minerals to do nothing and he still comes out ahead. That is amazing. I guess it did help against the Dark Templar at least a little bit but this is just insanity. Anyway, hope you enjoyed, <laughs> and I will see you next time. Chee-chee.